Hey all, this is Ron K. Armstrong, filmmaker extraordinaire. And today I want to talk to you about a very important subject for those of you who are actors and filmmakers, and that subject is failure. And I want to kind of title this video that uh, failing in the film industry is good. So I'm going to cover some points. I have five points of things that I've kind of learned in this industry that I want to impart upon you. And hopefully you can take some of this and learn from it. But this is what I've learned that I think that could really help you in terms of achieving some level of success and longevity in, in the business. Um, everyone has a unique situation and their circumstances will be different. Some of these things may apply, some of these things may not. Um, but, you know, when I started going uh, to film school and started studying acting, one of the things that I noticed is that they were um, basically giving me a lot of stuff that wasn't necessarily, um, it didn't necessarily apply to me, in other words. So it was like this cookie cutter system, well, this is what you need to do, and if you do this, you're, you're um, um, likely to have success, you're likely to uh, be, you know, the next Spielberg, the next uh, Lucas, or James Cameron, or, you know, the next Brad Pitt, or whatever. But what you find out is that the industry is not the way that they teach you and you pay all of this money and you're going to a, a, an acting school or getting an acting coach or you're, you're, you you um, you go to film school and then you get out and then you go into the business and then you realize that what um, will enable you to be successful is not what you've been taught. And that's life in general. You know, you, you go to college, you go to the university and you, you study and then you leave and you find out everything you study doesn't apply in the real world and you have to learn a whole new skill set to survive. So what I want to do is I want to take the gloves off, all right? What I want to start talking about is real world experience, things that you need to be aware of that will get you someplace in this business that we call the film industry, you know, because there's too much just, I'm sorry to say it, and maybe using some swear words in this video, too much bullshit out there that they, they want to teach you. And there's no one out there telling you reality of the situation, you know, but the main thing I want to impress upon you that you have to understand is that failure is a good thing. There is nothing wrong with failing. I failed a million times and I think Thomas Edison, when he tried to invent the light bulb, failed about a thousand times, but he eventually put together the light bulb and well, you know, he didn't really create, invent the light bulb. The filament was, I think it was stolen from Lewis Lattimore, but he was, Edison stole a lot of stuff. But anyway, it took him a thousand tries or whatever. And or was it 10,000 tries? Well, whatever, you can Google it. And he was able to construct the light bulb. So this idea that we, you know, we're in a weird freaking society. It is screwed up. It, it, it you know, and I, and I'm sorry, but I think that this society is full of psychopaths. I'm sorry, but I think that a lot of people are crazy, and especially in Hollywood. And the thing is that they, they actually think that the idea of failing or failure is a bad thing. No, it's a necessary thing for you to learn and move forward. If you don't fail, you're not learning. If you don't fail, you're not human. You know, so we're going to fail. We're going to fail dozens of times. But let me tell you something. What makes you successful in anything in life, especially the film industry, is your attitude about the failure, is your attitude about what you're doing. Because if you're going in there with a positive attitude, then there's nothing that's going to stop you from achieving your success. And what I mean by a positive attitude, too many people are outcome dependent. Now, what does that mean? That means that, well, if I don't achieve success, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. If I don't become a famous actor, I'm going to die. I'm going to kill myself. If I don't become a famous director, it's all over. That is the wrong attitude because you're expecting something out of it. But when you can do what you love for the joy of it, then success is a natural extension of that. Do you understand what I mean? The, the idea of us looking to get something and, and being dependent on things to make us happy puts us, it sets us up, puts us in a situation for falling, for failing every time. Now, 
as I said, it's not a bad thing to fail. But again, it's your attitude. Some people say, well, you know what? What really makes you successful is that you, you pick yourself up and you keep going. Yes, that's true. But you can't pick yourself up if you have a really bad negative attitude about things. So you got to get that attitude addressed. All right. That has to be the first thing. And you have to also have a proper perspective on things. You have to understand what you're dealing with. Too many people jump into things and they don't understand the arena. They don't, don't understand the culture. They don't understand the circumstances that they're in. And you've got these self-help gurus out there and these books out there saying that you can achieve anything if you just have a positive state of mind. Now, hey, there's nothing wrong with, with having the positive state of mind, as I said before, because that ultimately will determine your success. But what I want to do is to base that in reality and say this, listen, yes, the industry is tough as hell. There are people in the industry that don't want you in there. There are people in the industry that won't li like you. OK, and the idea is that, yes, there are people who will achieve, who are who are are, door, are are ordained by fate to be successful. They will be successful and they don't have to do anything. They're, they're born with a silver spoon in their mouth and they'll they'll get all of the parts, all of the roles. They'll they'll get hundred million dollars to make the next film. And that's just the, the, the luck of the dice. That's how it the, the cookie crumbles. But. What you also have to understand this is that, and I, I kind of want this to be paramount um, in the way you think. We talk about how everyone's on an equal playing field, how if you work hard and you're talented, you're going to be successful. And it's not true because I'm going to tell you this. Certain people are born with an advantage. Some people are born with human resources as an advantage. And what do I mean by that? Certain people are born with family members who are connected in the industry, family members who are lawyers, uh, who, who are bankers, who um, are, are like um, heads of CEOs. And those resources, those human resources afford them opportunities. OK, other people are born with the advantage of being in a wealthy family, which will enable them to make quicker moves toward their success in the film industry. And other people are born without any of those things. And there's another thing. Now, I talked about being born with human resources, being born with money, and there's also being born in a culture, in a climate that affords you success. And so this breaks down into understanding what good habits are. You know, are you born into a two-parent household that teaches you the value of study, hard work, tenacity, dedication. A lot of people are not. A lot of people are born with parents who are screwed up, single parents. And so they're born with a disadvantage where you may be born with, in, in the scenario where there's human resources, where you have an uncle who is an agent at, at um, creative arts agency, and, and we can get you connected to um, or get you a meeting with a famous producer, that's wonderful. While others aren't, don't have that opportunity and they're two steps back while you're two steps forward. So they have to work harder and, and they have to learn things that ordinarily you shouldn't have to learn. In other words, they have to learn, hey, you know what? I've got to really study. You know, I've never seen my parents read a book. I've never seen my parents apply themselves to anything. So I didn't pick up that trait because we know through studies of science, it's not necessarily what your parents tell you verbally. That, that helps too. But it's the energy and the vibration you get from your surroundings, the people, your parents. If you have parents that are very hardworking, dedicated, and building their own business, that energy will rub off on you. And without you know it, you're going to emulate those traits. But there are other people who aren't born with that. So what am I saying with all of this? Okay. I'm saying that don't ever think that the playing field is equal. But however, that is no excuse for you to say, well, I don't know anybody in the industry. I don't have human resources. I don't have money. You know, I, I was born in a a, a messed up culture where my family never taught me how to apply myself. They, they, you know, um, they may have like uh, crushed my dreams, told me I was stupid for wanting to be an actor, but that is no excuse. You still have to go for it and go for it with 110%. But I want you to understand that these factors do play a part in it. Now I talked about 
Now, there's a difference between having the positive attitude and being delusional, you know, like not seeing reality, you know. Yes, it's good to have that positive attitude. As I said, your attitude can determine your success, but you cannot ignore reality, especially when it smacks you in the face because there are certain things that you are going to need to be successful in this business. So let me go over my five points because I want to really get into that so you can um, walk away with something really good here. One of the things I want you to do, and I think that really helped, is meditation. Um, have a morning and a night ritual where you're meditating. It doesn't have to be for a long period of time. You can meditate for five, 10 minutes. And the idea is visualizing what you want to achieve in this business because meditation is important. Now, um, you always want to see things that are positive. Now, after that, when you're having your daily routine in life, I want you to only focus on the things that are positive and focus on the things that will get you to where you want to go. Always think in terms of this is happening or this is going to happen very soon. Now, what is this? This is the RAS, the reticular activation system, which makes you aware of certain things. The more you focus on those things, the more they expand and become part of your reality. So if you keep focusing on success in the business, then opportunities will start to put position them themselves so you could take advantage of them and that's important um, because these things do kind of like shape the reality that you're in and put you at the right place at the right time but you have to incorporate this and another aspect to this is the flip side of the coin I call is going dark what is going dark mean going dark is basically um, you're not looking at anything negative you don't consider the the negative outcomes of things you know, that's not in your sphere of awareness. It's not in your reality. So don't even contemplate it. One of the things that ha can happen if you get into a, a pattern of thinking where you're making those synaptic connections over and over again because you're caught in this loop of negativity, it will start to shape the reality around you. You will only see negative things that will expand. And before you know it, there will be no opportunities before you and, and answers and solutions will not pop up in, in, into your mind. Now, people say, oh, this is all metaphysical. Yeah, yeah, okay, whatever, but it works, okay? So, <laughs> so think about that. Think about, um, and also place yourself in the state that you want to, to, you want to be in, or I should say more precisely, the state that you want to live in. In other words, let's say, for example, if I wanted to be rich, right? How does a rich person feel? How do they act? Place yourself in that type of state. You know, if I am a famous actor, what does a famous actor do? How do they feel? Be in touch with that vibration, that frequency. Emulate that frequency. And when you start to act in that way, you will find that things will start to change around you because um, state is transferable. The state that you in resonates, vibrates, goes out into the world and creates a rally before you. The other thing, the other thing is number two is when I'm talking to people and I'm kind of listening to their situation is that there are a lot of people who are adverse to risk. You're going to have to take risk. And yes, you risk, you'll fail. You may fail big time. But the point of the matter is that if you have the right attitude, the failure is going to be a learning experience. Now, here's something that's key. When you're taking those risks and you do fail and you will fail and don't think of it as a devastating thing. Think of it as, hey, you know what? Fuck failure. This is what happens. You know, I'm moving on. When you look back at the failure, you should only look back at the positive aspects that you gain from the failure. Don't ever look back at the negative things that are coming from that. You know what I mean? Start thinking in terms of everything you do has a positive outcome to it. Um, because the truth is, life is meaningless. It's only the meaning that you impart to it that gives us its definition and meaning. So in other words, somebody may like coffee, another person may hate coffee. So we know that it is neutral. It's only your perspective and your emotions that gives it meaning. All right. So taking chances, taking risk is important in this business. Now, wh what do I mean by that? Whatever you're doing, take it a step further. 
push your step, push yourself a, a step further. In other words, say for example, you meet a famous producer, right? You shake hands. You only you're in the elevator. You only have two minutes with this producer, right? And you introduce yourself. You say you're a director, and you say this. You know, what advice would you give to an aspiring director? Okay, the hell with that. The hell with that. Ask him. Hey, you know what? I got a script. Would you mind reading the script? I think it's awesome. I think it could be a blockbuster. You know push it a step further we don't take enough chances we don't we don't push things as far as they go some people are saying well i don't want to blow the opportunity i'm afraid i'm gonna come off you know too too anxious too aggressive well again so if you fail so what there'll be more opportunities if you've got the right attitude all right if you if, if you you're positive about what's going on and you in, truly enjoy what you're doing then don't worry about it don't worry about it because you know what it, we've done experiments where if you're having human interactions with people what determines how people react to you is your expectation if you're expecting somebody who you meet to have a positive reaction to you they will if you expect them to have a negative reaction to you then it will happen and many times it's from what we call the subcommunication, where people are reading reading your body language or reading your energy, and you're giving that off. You ever, you know, if you feel weird about something, you ever have it where people you creep people out if you feel weird about something because you're feeling weird, so they're gonna feel weird. That energy is rubbing off. So you got to learn to push things a bit further. You know what I mean? Um, if if you if you only rehearse an hour, rehearse two hours. You know what I mean? If if you're writing your screenplay and you only write for about two hours a day, write for three hours a day. And that little extra step may be just enough to get you over that wall, to get you there. Because what I've noticed in this business in, in the many years that I've I've been working here and had some success, lots of failures, some success, is that it was always that one little extra thing if i did that it could have made a world of difference it could have took me on a totally different path so start thinking in those terms of like pushing things you know especially with the interactions with people don't be afraid to ask people listen can i shadow you i'd like to learn from you you know tell me what i need to do i'm willing to listen and man will you be my mentor you know don't be afraid of that you know you want you want more money ask your boss for more money go for it what are they going to say no so all right keep moving you know the next thing is be good at one thing take something that you're doing and master that maybe you're good at reading a script and remembering the entire script after only um one read if you can do that people will love you or maybe you are a director who's good at color correction, or if, if you're a filmmaker who's who's really good at uh, camera positioning um, and coming up with nice creative angles, take that, master that sucker, and let that be your forte, because that's going to pay off in the industry, and people will notice. People will start to say, you know, I watched that film, and I really, really love the direction you gave the actors. You know, they seem very authentic. And you're like, well, yeah, I, I'm. I love directing. I'm really good at bringing out emotions in actors. So focus on that one thing, um, elevate it, work hard at it, and make it something that you can master. You know, when I when I was watching Orson Welles. Um, Citizen Kane, and I started to go and watch all of his other films. I realized that Citizen Kane was not a fluke. He was an awesome director, you know, and he had a knack for understanding not only directing but camera positioning, camera angles. He was he was awesome at that, you know. So start focusing on something where you can excel and become a genius in. People will know you for that particular one thing, you know. Doesn't mean you 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 can't you know like have ancillary skills or no other things but try to just have that one thing that you really really excel at maybe it's improvisation maybe you're good at improving you know it's going to make the difference when the time comes the next thing is um 
you need to have like a side hustle or a, or, or a business or something that you do where you don't have to depend on a nine to five because a nine to five can drain you of your energy. It won't allow you to go to auditions. It won't, um, it won't give you the free time to work on a production or like shoot your films. So really try to, to, to have something on the side that's bringing you um, income. Uh, as, you know, I don't care if you're if you're bartending or whatever, or you you build websites or whatever, you know, have that in your back pocket as a way for you to be financially free and also have the time to focus on your career, because um, one of the things in this Western world that we live in, they like to kill you with working you to death you know, and, and many people work overtime, you know, so try and avoid getting caught up in that rat race, getting caught up in that nine to five, because that could really end up being your life right there. You know, you, you may go, well, I'm only going to do this temporary just to make some money. And, and 10 years later, you're still working that nine to five job. So try and find something that you have that can bring you some income. Um, and it gives you like the flexibility that you need to still pursue your career. And the last thing, number five, um, is your network, your circle of friends, your circle of people. This is very important. You need to be around a mastermind group. But more importantly, you need to be around people who are intelligent and who have connections and or money. Because one of the things that can get you to where you're going really fast is to have intelligent financially stable um, people in your circle. Because if you're going to say start a business, you can tap into your friends. If you're going to like make a move to New York or LA, you have people there who will offer you support and guidance. Um, because sometimes relocating can be very disruptive. It can be very challenging. You're, you're getting acclimated to a new city. But if you have a good circle of friends, and, and and again, intelligent friends, that could be your support and your, your support system, especially when times get tough. And what I mean, emotionally tough, because there's a lot of rejection in this business and you need somebody to talk to, to fall back on who can encourage you to keep going. Do not, <laughs> and this is important, do not fill your social circle with cl all close family members, because though they may, you know, have good intentions they can sometimes sabotage your career by by telling you negative things like well maybe you should start thinking about getting a regular job maybe you should start thinking about getting married and settling down you know so be very careful again the way that you can do this this social circle is by going and networking with people giving out your business cards following up with these individuals but only fill your mastermind group or your social circle with important influential people who can get you somewhere do not put a bunch of dead wood in your circle. You, you, you know, it does you no good to be surrounded by people who are like not even on your level, you know, and I'm not looking down upon anybody. I'm not saying you should, you know, think that, oh, I'm too good to be hanging with so-and-so. And, -so. and there's, there's too much of that in, in Hollywood as it is in the business. What I'm saying is that in order for you to get good at what you're doing, you need to be surrounded with people who are just as good or even better because you're going to learn from them. Getting around people who are on your same level, who are struggling, is not going to help you. Cut them off. I'm sorry. This is You've got to be cutthroat about this. Look, people on your same level are not of benefit to you. You've got to start thinking about who do I need to associate with that can take me somewhere. The people that were in my circles, on my social circle, were a head of a studio, were an entertainment attorney, were an agent, and who else was? Oh, with two guys who were millionaires who started their own business and were millionaires. These are the people you want to to be able to pick up the phone and have conversations with. Now, the one thing you don't want to do is to be phony and use people because that'll get you in trouble, that'll get you excommunicated in this industry and, you, and you'll, your name will become mud. So be sincere, have good quality of friends and people in your surroundings. And you know, it reminds me of a guy, um, I think I've told this story before, his name was Bob and Bob was an awesome guy, but everywhere Bob went, he seemed to have friends. I don't know what this guy had, but he had some type of juju or, or magic or energy to where he attracted people. 
People knew his name. He would walk into a bar, walk into a club, walk into a store. Hey, Bob, what's going on, man? How you doing? And I was just amazed at this. And I'm not kidding you. This was like freaky. Everywhere he went, people knew him. And they always spoke positively about him. And I just wondered how this guy did it. And, you know, and uh, I should have asked him because I actually, uh, um, you know, work with him for a, a long time and I never really found out his secret, you know? Um, so maybe I should go back and talk to Bob and say, Bob, well, how did you do it, man? What, what did you do? I do remember that he was just a very positive guy and just had fun. You know, he was one of those guys that, you know, he, he wasn't overly optimistic. He, he, he had a very realistic perspective or outlook on life, but he always just was smiling and said, you know, whatever comes along, you know, I'll handle it. I'll deal with it. And it wasn't that he didn't have in like, you know, like really down days. He did. I was there. I saw it. he had down days, but he recovered fairly quickly. And that's another thing I want to touch on is that you're going to have those days where things aren't going right, that you're going to feel down, understand and accept it. It's natural. That happens. No one can be positive all the time. No one can be happy all the time. No one can have just a string of good luck. I'm sorry, good looks, good, good luck that happens to be there. And, you know, of course, no one has good looks forever, but, you know, um, things come and go. We live in a world of cycles. So if the bad times come, understand they will go. Learn to weather that storm and deal with it. You know, too much. We've been fed this garbage. And I, I really have to emphasize this because these self-help gurus and these people teaching these things come at you with all this hype and motivation and talk about this and that and say, it's all about a positive and joyous perspective. And there's half truth to that, but it's also there, there are, are steps and processes that you have to implement with that, you know, and I've talked a little bit about that, you know, Failure is okay. Take the risk. Fail. If you're thinking about relocating, do it. Shut up. Stop thinking. Go ahead and do it. You know what I mean? If you are getting up and you're going to an audition and you go to two auditions, you know, and then you say, oh, you know, this, this, I, I don't know what else to do. I, I'm going to these auditions and nothing's happening. Well, you know what? Push yourself even harder. You know what I mean? Go to an audition that's not in your state. Go fly out to LA, fly out to New York and go to auditions there. Take the chance, take the risk. Do you know how many stories I've read about actors who are starting out who actually flew to an audition and um, without knowing they would get it in that, but took the chance? So what I'm saying is that if you, if you, if you are afraid to fail, then you're going to fail. The very thing that you are fearful of is going to, is going to, is going to manifest a mushroom in your environment and it's going to become part of your reality. So embrace it and say, I'm not concerned about it because I know the part of failure is, 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 is the other side of the coin of success is a natural extension of success. The more you feel, you learn from that experience and you move closer to where you need to go to be successful. It's simple as that. That's it. Now, um, go to the back over the five points I talked about before. The first one is meditating, understanding your state putting yourself in that like state that you want to be in. If you want to be a famous director, what does a famous director feel like? Emulate that state. If you want to be a famous actor, what does a, a famous actor feel like? Put yourself in that state. Number two, take chances. Push yourself a little bit harder, a little bit harder. And I, I, I actually mean that. Don't push yourself too much because then the mind will rebel against that. So in other words, if say for example, if you're going to the gym, right? And you go to the gym for an hour, push yourself to go an extra 15 minutes. Don't push yourself to go an extra hour, you know, handle, do things that you can handle. Don't push yourself too far because radical change, the body and the mind tends to reject a uh, quick radical change. So do it in increments to where you can um, have the body adjust and the mind adjust to that and then move on to the next step and the next step and the next step. Become good at one thing. That's the, the uh, third thing. Just focus on something that you can become a genius in and excel at. And um, that could be your forte and that's what you're known for. Uh, number four is have something on the side that gives you 
additional income so you don't have to depend or work on a nine to five job. You know, whether it's um, you building websites, you're a photographer or whatever, do that so it can bring you some extra income. Um, the fifth thing is put together as soon as possible a mastermind group or a circle of friends who are influential, who have connections, who have money that can help you, who have skill sets or knowledge of the industry who can help you. If you know someone who's a really accompl not accomplished actor, I don't want to say accomplished, but you know, what does that mean? Though? You know, who's really a good actor, you know, um, work with them. If they're better than you, definitely work with them, hang with them, you know, um, learn from them. Don't hang around people who are on your same level or below, because although, um, they're, they're good friends, you know, eventually you're going to have to take the dive and say, if I want to get good, I'm going to have to be around people whose energy I can absorb. And studies have been done in corporate America is when they put people in a cubicle, um, say, for example, one person is not excelling at their job, they're having trouble. But when they put people, I put that person in the cubicles um, near people who are good at their job, that person becomes better. Their talent increases as, as much as 40%. So think about that. Just you being around very talented and influential people will increase your knowledge and your skill set that much more. But if you're around people who are negative and, and, and not as good as you, you'll find that you're going to plateau. You're going to stay at a certain level. And that's going to be the problem, you know. And and one thing I quickly learned when I when I got my um, circle of friends was uh, there's a lot I didn't know. <laughs> you know, you know, you I thought I knew things, but when I started getting around people um, who had uh, made something of themselves in the business, I realized that hey, you know what, the things that I thought I knew, I really didn't know. So um, it's time to move to the next level. It's time to not be afraid of failure. Failure is good. Failure will springboard you to success. Um, so just take, have, take it, have the right set of mind and perspective on it to where, you know, let me stop here. Let me, I equate this to, to Ma'at. If you are familiar with the comedic philosophy, the Egyptian philosophy, Ma'at was the goddess of truth, justice, and righteousness. More importantly, she was the goddess of um, the way, you know, she, she, um, She's known for the weighing of scales, meaning they would put your heart on one side of the scale and a feather on the other. And your heart had to be lighter than the feather because that meant you were lighthearted, meaning you didn't take things too seriously. You didn't internalize things. You didn't become bitter about things. You didn't become upset about things. That you took things lightheartedly because in the business, there is a tendency to personalize things. When someone tells you you're not right for the role, when someone tells you that, you know what, um, you're, you're too white, you're too black, too tall, too short, too fat, you're going to internalize that. And you can't help but do so. But try to be lighthearted. Try not to take it personal because it's not you. It's not you. Understand that we're all born with a set of circumstances. Look at your circumstances, how you were born, with, and say, what do I need to do? Am I two steps behind or, or am I two steps ahead? and then start working from there, um, have that perspective and study the industry, understand how the industry works because jumping into something and not really understanding the arena and the circumstances and the culture is a sure way of, of not, um, not achieving the success you want. So I've said a lot. Um, I hope you have enjoyed these five points that I think can help you. They've helped me. Um, if you like this video, like it. If you feel inclined, please subscribe to my channel. And until my next video, this is Ron K. Armstrong, filmmaker extraordinaire, and that's all for now. Bye.